Hey, what's up? So today we're gonna go do some more stuff on the uh, Killer Bee and we're gonna get a little bit of work done on the 8. And uh, with my friend Dominic in his Velocitor. And uh, I don't know if you can hear it too well, but let's show him what this thing does. <laughs> That's his uh, custom homemade uh, blow off valve. <laughs> But um, we're gonna go to Harbor Freight and pick up a engine stand, just a cheap, shitty 750 pound weight limit engine stand, because they're cheap, and uh, I don't need a higher weight limit up for it. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get over there now. Okay, so we just made it to Harbor Freight, so we're gonna go in and look at their shitty engine stands. It'll work just fine. All right, well, here's their options. I guess have all of, what, three? Three engine stands? Unless you want to hang it. So they got this one, which holds 750 pounds for 48 bucks. They have one that holds 1,000 pounds for 60 bucks. And what's this one? They got this one for 135 bucks. It holds 2,000 pounds. So, how many rotor engines do we need to hold on one stand, do you think? One. Just one. Yeah, this is like, what, eight worth? <laughs> this can hold an LS motor. Yeah, th those aren't really that heavy, though. It's like... But they're heavy compared to a rotary engine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's like, what, 60 pound weight difference? Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I think about three rotary engines worth is more than enough, so we're gonna go ahead and go with this one. Okay, I just found my new favorite thing at Harbor Freight. Fart machines. <laughs> what, what, what actually are these things? They are cast iron twin cylinder air compressor pumps. I like fart machine better. Fart machine. <laughs> Okay, so a uh, little unexpected stuff, but I ended up getting a thousand pound engine stand because they don't have any 750s in stock. So ended up paying about 64 bucks. Where's the price? There it is. So uh, I'm trying to record and do this with one hand. So. You know what? I think I have 20% off coupon too. Yeah. I think these are already discounted. Maybe they're always this price. I don't know. Okay, how are we gonna fit this in here? Uh, good question. <laughs> uh, just fucking send it? Just send it. <laughs> just send it. Here, hold this. Okay. <laughs> Old dead turbo two housing. Oh, we still need to get that uh, exhaust port out. Or exhaust sleeve or whatever. I think I have a drill that'll fit that, but I don't know. Anyway, um, we're gonna get over to my storage and then uh, try and get the, the engine mounted onto it and then uh, go from there. We fit that to the Velocitor. Fit it in the Velocitor. We fit a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna get over there now. Let's see if he does it. Okay, <laughs> we made it to my storage unit. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on some stuff. Get some shit out of the trunk. And open this bitch up. wasn't nearly as bad as it usually is. Ow. And get to see my burn to shit clutch. I think I showed you this in my last video about this. But um, yeah, and I get to, get to work on the eight and then get this bitch pulled apart. And then, uh, okay, so uh, me and Dom uh, got the uh, engine stand all put together and we got the engine on the stand. Yay. And uh, there was quite a bit of fluids in there still. Uh, we turned the engine and oil and coolant started spewing out. Uh, I guess we didn't drain all of it when, uh, when I took the engine out. But um, <laughs> anyway, we're gonna pull the engine apart and see just how, uh, how bad everything is. So uh, we're gonna go and do that now.
Okay, well, got the uh, rear iron off, and this is the inside of a Killer B engine. And uh, just looking here, uh, the housing actually looks to be in really good shape. Um, I'll actually know when I take the housing off. But um, let's go ahead and look at this rear port. Now, I didn't think this uh, rear iron was ported, but it looks like it, it might have been. Yeah. Kind of rough. And also, it doesn't look like step wear is too bad. It doesn't look like anything got damaged. So one R5 plate, oh yes, looks to be a uh, nitrided R5 plate, a uh, little four, uh, I forget what those are called, a little um, things that are blocked off. So yeah, it'll save me some cost of nitriding. Um, I'll probably be corrected if I'm wrong on that. Um, and if I am wrong on that, please do correct me on that. But I do believe these are nitrided. And that looks to have a, uh, Kind of bronze finish. Almost a stationary here. Yeah, it looks like a titanium. But it's not a Renesis one, obviously, because this was built over three decades ago. Renesis didn't exist then. Yeah, looks like it has like a zinc coating. Alright, well, let's get back to uh, taking the engine apart. So pretty. Okay, so a couple things didn't go as planned. One, my uh, battery died during the time lapse of the engine disassembly, so I didn't get to record the rest of that, which kind of sucks. And two, uh, well, during the engine disassembly, well, let's go show you. Okay, so here is my engine, uh, all disassembled and stuff. And a little bit of good news and uh, a little bit of bad news. Um, start off with the bad news, and that is my uh, front rotor is locked to the e-shaft. So it turns out that it was the uh, front rotor bearing that seized and uh, you know, caused my engine to lock while I was driving. And uh, what that means is that I can't get it out of the center iron uh, because the rotor can't move. So what I'm gonna have to do for that is uh, clamp this e-shaft down on the vise. It's not reusable anyway. I uh, kind of fucked this front part up, but whatever. I, I wasn't gonna reuse it anyway, so no loss there. But um, I'm going to have to clamp this down on a vise and then uh, find a way to move this rotor a little bit forward. Um, how I do that, I will figure that out. But, you know, anyway, uh, besides that, step wear seems to be pretty minimal. Uh, nothing surprising for a 40-year-old 13B with unknown miles besides the 22,000 that I put on it. And uh, also, what kind of surprised me was that it looks like the outer irons are also ported and not just the uh, center iron. Now, the reason why I thought only the center iron was ported was because it's the only one that has a noticeable Dremel work on the inner part of it. Whereas the outer irons have a, what looks to be no Dremel work at all on the uh, inner part right here. Uh, but it looks like there's a little bit right here in this little notch where my finger is. But uh, looks like they're port matched, and that would also explain why I was able to make 136 foot pounds of torque when uh, this engine came stock with 130 horsepower at the flywheel. Um, it made 154 horsepower at the wheels, and uh, I think that equates to 187 uh, horsepower. I think that's considering 12% drivetrain loss. So, uh, really impressive engine. Uh, just had a little bit of oil pressure issue that caused it to lock right there. But enough of that, I already explained that in a, in another video. Uh, with the housings, the rear housing looked to be in really good shape. A little bit of flaking in some areas, but I think it was all in the combustion area, so, you know, nothing, uh, nothing too bad. Um, let's see, with the front housing, there's some questionable, uh, questionable wear. Well, not wear, um, there's like a little scratch on the uh, outer edge, and I think it was at the end of the compression area. Uh, so it's a little bit questionable. Um, I may end up just sending both these housings off to be resurfaced and uh, may send my other housing off to be resurfaced as well because I have three of them in total, um, all RX-5 housings, so that's pretty good. But um, you know, I don't, I don't see anything that says that these 
that any of these parts are uh, unusable or anything like that. Um, let's see, of course none of them are exactly ideal, but um, being that these are all NLA parts, which means no longer available, I'd say I'm in pretty good shape for, uh, for a rebuild here. So the next step from here is, uh, oh, just waiting for my rotors to come back from CLR Motorsports. Um, Carlos uh, gave me an update on those and uh, I paid half down uh, for the balancing cost and they should be done sometime this coming week. And uh, I may possibly have them back at the end of this, uh, this next week, so in about six or seven days from now. And uh, I can start prepping for a rebuild, but in the meantime, I'll get all these parts cleaned up and uh, well, I'll keep you updated. Um, also, if you want to, uh, you know, have a little bit more detailed updates, uh, go to the link in the description below. Uh, that is my build thread for this. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much it for this video. Um, again, sorry, I couldn't do a, a full time-lapse video with the engine teardown. Um, Apple's uh, performance throttling and uh, you know, all that bullshit's killing my battery like hell. So I'm gonna go pay 30 bucks for a new battery from them so I can fix this shit. And uh, yeah. But that's a, that's a rant for another video or poster or something on Facebook. I don't know. All right, see ya.